section 220 by Sampayana said, then Arjuna, of immeasurable prowess, saw one after another all the sacred waters and other holy places that were on the shores of the western ocean. Vibhatsu reached the sacred spot called Prabhosa when the invincible Arjuna arrived at that sacred and delightful region. The slayer of Madhu, Krishna, heard of it. Madhava soon went there to see his friend, the son of Kunti. Krishna and Arjuna met together and embracing each other inquired after each other's welfare. Those dear friends who were none else than the rishis, Nara and Narayana of old, sat down. Vasudeva asked Arjuna about his travels, saying, Why, O Pandava, art thou wandering over the earth, beholding all the sacred waters and other holy places? And Arjuna told him everything that had happened. Hearing all, that mighty hero of Krishna's race said, This is as it should be. And Krishna and Arjuna, having sorted as they liked for some time, had Prabhasa went to the Raivataka mountain to pass some days there. Before they arrived at Raivataka, that mountain had at the command of Krishna been well adorned by many artificers. Much food also had at Krishna's command been collected there, enjoying everything that had been collected there for him. Arjuna sat with Vasudeva to see the performances of the actors and the, the dancers. Then the eyes old Pandava, dismissing them all with proper respect, laid himself down on a well adorned and excellent bed. As the strong armed one lay on that excellent bed, he described unto Krishna everything about the sacred waters, the lakes and the mountains, the rivers and the forest he had seen. While he was speaking of these, stretched upon that celestial bed's sleep, O Janamejaya, stole upon him. He rose in the morning, awakened by sweet songs and melodious notes of the veena, guitar, and the penagi writs and benedictions of the bards. After he had gone through the necessary acts and ceremonies, he was affectionately accosted by him of the Rishni race. Riding upon a golden car, the hero then set out for Dwaraka, the capital of the Yadavas, and Ho Janamejaya, for honoring the son of Kunti, the city of Dwaraka, was well adorned, even all the gardens and houses within it. The citizens of Dwaraka, desirous of beholding the son of Kunti, began to pour eagerly into the public through fairs by hundreds of thousands. In the public squares and thoroughfares, hundreds and thousands of women, mixing with the men, swelled the great crowd of the Bojas, the Rishnis and the Andakas that had collected there. Arjuna was welcomed with respect by all the sons of Bojas, the Rishnis and the Andakas, and he in his turn worshipped those that deserved his worship, receiving their blessings. The hero was welcomed with affectionate reception by all the hangmen of the Yadava tribe. He repeatedly embraced all that were equal to him in age, bending then to be a delightful mansion of Krishna that was filled with gems and every article of enjoyment. He took up his abode there with Krishna for many days. Thus ends the 220th section in the Arjuna Vayavasa Parva of the Hadi Parva.